Hello, today I would like to show you how to make this overall simple part that is a holder for pens that you can put on your desk. But the party trick that this component can do is it is fully driven by parameters, meaning we can add or remove rows as we need to accommodate for more or less pens. We need to create a couple variables to start with. So we'll go to change parameters and you can get to this design shortcuts menu by hitting the S key on your keyboard. Then just start typing change and click on that. You can click this little plus here to add a parameter. We're going to start with whole OD. That's going to be 15 mil for me. Create another one. Whole padding. It's going to be 1.2 mil. And the final one is going to be row count. And we want to change the unit here to no units. No unit is just a generic number that we can use in quantity fields and patterns and stuff like that. And then just click OK. We can close out of the parameters window and start a sketch on the X Z plane, which is red and blue. We should have top showing over here. Start by creating a center diameter circle just right at the sketch origin and whole OD is going to be the parameter that we use here. The goal for this first sketch is to define the overall body. And to do that, we need to know the size of the body, but we need to derive that from the placement of the holes. But we're not actually going to create the holes off this first sketch with extrudes. We're going to do that on a second feature later. All that means for now is that these need to become construction lines which are these dotted lines, and they will not create sketch profiles. So make sure construction is selected, and we're going to end up creating one more circle just off to the side here. And you can dimension that by hitting the D key and then just clicking on this dimension here. That will set it as a reference to that dimension, keeping them the exact same size. Next, we'll create a rectangular pattern. So I'll hit the design shortcuts and select rectangular pattern. Make sure you get the sketch version, which is the one with the hollow boxes and not the solid ones. Click on the sketch circle that's at the origin of the sketch. And make sure distribution is set to spacing. We want this direction here off to the right. In the distance section, we're going to select whole OD plus whole padding. And then for the quantity, we just want row count. Now this is driven by the row count parameter. So if we open change parameters and I type say a five in here, we can see that those appear right away. We'll keep it to three for now. And now we need to lock this circle in place. There's a couple ways to do it, but the easiest way is going to be grab the dimension tool, right click on the circle, hit tangent arc, click here and then click here and make this dimension whole padding. So these are dimensioned you know, one padding width away. And if we throw that same dimension, a tangent to this circle, that will lock it in place. Now you may have noticed that the circle has turned black. That means that it's fully constrained. With parametric designs, you want all of your sketches to be constrained to capture the intent of the design. If we look under the sketches in the component tree, you can see that there's a little lock icon here. That means that it's fully constrained. If I create a random circle here, you know, it can move around that changed to a little pencil icon, which means it's not fully constrained. We'll create another rectangular pattern, this time using the bottom circle. We want the same direction and the same distance here, which is whole OD plus whole padding. Except this time we want row count minus one because we want one less hole on the front. So it kind of keeps this staggered shape. Now that we have the general shape of what we're creating down, we need to create the actual body. Hit L to start a new line, and we're just gonna rough in the shape that we want. There's going to be a line here. If it's a dotted line like this, you need to make sure to turn construction off over in the sketch palette. Create another line down here. Create one here. And then you can grab a tangent arc, create one from here to here and from here to here. Doesn't matter that this looks all goofy because we're going to sort it out right now. Start by putting a tangent constraint on this arc to the top line or whichever line isn't already tangent. You can see which ones are tangent by the little constraint icon. Tangent this one as well. And then we need to grab our dimension, 
dimension this line to the tangent of this circle, and it's going to be the padding. Do the same thing down here. And then we need to lock these arcs in place with these circles. There's two ways to do it, and I'll show you how to do both of those. First, we can do coincident constraint. And if we grab the point of this circle, the center point of the arc, and then click on the center point of this circle, that'll lock it in place. And because this line is already dimensioned to be the padding, this circle of the arc will also maintain that padding. And for this other one down here, we can do the same thing with a concentric constraint. So if we take this arc and say, hey, be concentric with this circle, we get the exact same result. If you attempt to move these lines now, they won't move. However, you may notice that the sketch still has a pencil on it. That's because these lines are not constrained yet. The goal for these lines is going to be that we want to get halfway through the whole part. And then we're going to mirror them over to the other side instead of drawing more lines. To get there, we need to figure out a little bit of math. And what that's going to start with is we hit the D key, click right there. We're going to take the number of circles with the size of the circles plus their padding. And we'll just start with that. Since we're going to be doing multiplication, we need to put the addition operation inside of quotes to make that happen first because the dimension box will use order of operations. So I can show you what that looks like. If I just do whole OD plus whole padding times row count, that's unideal because it is doing whole padding times row count and then adding whole OD, where we want it to sum whole padding plus whole OD together and then multiply, and that's closer to what we want. Now we're overshooting because we need to not include this right half of the circle and this left half of this circle, which is essentially one entire circle size so we can lop off a whole od and then we also need to get rid of a whole padding i've also just realized that i have called this parameter hold od i'm just going to change that to whole od and this is what we want the end point of this circle is right above this circle here which is perfect we can then draw a line between these two points and we'll make this a center line and we'll constrain this line to be vertical. We're going to need to center this before the mirror operation or after, it doesn't really matter. Let's actually start by mirroring it. If we go with a mirror, again, the sketch one is the hollow one, select these lines here. Because we have defined this as a center line, it already knows that we wanna use that as the mirror. So if we click okay, we now have the rest of the geometry. We can go back into this dimension and what we'll wanna do is wrap this whole thing in quotes and then just throw a slash two at the end to divide it in half. And that is exactly what we want. Now, the cool thing about this is if we go into change parameters, we can add more and the design will update automatically. One thing to note is that just because you have designed it and it is fully constrained does not mean that all inputs are valid. For instance, if we set this to two, it's going to get angry at us and tell it that it can't solve one of the dimensions, which is D18 right here. And if you're curious as to what D18 is under parameters, if you go and drill down, we see that D18 is this long one that we just created. And I believe the issue here is that it does not like, if I set this back to three, so it stops complaining, it does not like this line being of zero length down at the bottom. So if we now change the parameters to two, it'll solve that without a problem. But now the, the arc is kind of messed up here. Not all inputs are valid and the robustness of your design is going to dictate the validness of the inputs. For this design, as a primer to fully parametric models, I think it's acceptable to have a minimum row count of three, but we can go as high as we want on this upper value. It doesn't matter. It will just sort it out. So we'll set this down to a reasonable five for now, and then we'll click Finish Sketch. We now have two profiles that we can extrude from, and this is just going to be the total height 
of our object. I'm going to just set this to 100. We can kind of zoom out. If we want to have more control over the height, we can just create a new dimension here called height and then put the value in and update this extrude to use height. And then once again, we get the same control where we can change the value of that as we need. The next step is going to be creating a, another sketch. We'll create this sketch on the bottom here. And I'm going to turn the first sketch back on because I want these circles. I'm going to do a search for project and I want this project option. And I want this circle and this circle. If you're unfamiliar with project, what it's going to do is it's going to reference this geometry or sketch geometry and then project it into the currently active sketch, meaning that if we were to change the size of these circles using our parameter, the projection would also update, and thus our features that we're going to create will also update. I'm going to turn off construction line. I want these to actually be profiles, and I'll click OK, and I'll just click Finish Sketch. Now I can extrude each of these profiles. I can turn off the first sketch. I'll hit extrude or E. I'll start an extrude here and I want offset plane and I want to start the extrude from inside the bottom. The intent is to 3D print this. So I want a small amount of bottom on it. So the offset is going to be negative 1.2 and that's going to kick it into the part a little bit. And then the distance I'm just going to change to all and then it's going to likely extrude the wrong way. Just click flip. And that will put a hole through to the top where my beautiful pens will be able to sit in there. I'll turn on that sketch again, because after you use an extrude on a sketch, it hides it. I'll extrude the second back hole, except this time the offset plane is going to be negative 21.2. So bottom thickness of 1.2 mil. And then the distance again is all and then flip. The reason that this is 20 mil higher is because I want these pens to sit up higher than the ones in front, so they're easier to grab. If you want to see what that looks like, you can go to inspect and then section analysis. And if you click on a face, that will let you view what the model looks like at a cross section, which is kind of nice. We're done with this sketch now. And the last thing we need to do is get these holes to be patterned across. So we can hit S and then do rectangular pattern. This time we want the one with the solid boxes. For object type, we want features and we'll select the first extrude and then we'll choose axis. We just want the X axis. Change the distribution to spacing. And this is going to be the exact same formula that we used in the sketch pattern. So this is going to be whole OD plus whole padding. And then this is going to be row count minus one for the front set of holes. And we'll just redo that command features again, select the other extrude, same axis, hole OD plus hole padding, and then row count. That's it. If you want, you can pop a fillet onto the top here to make it look kind of nice. Pop a fillet onto the bottom to help the 3D printing process and hit OK. And if we go into change parameters and set this to 10 and we get 10, 10 holes. We can set it all the way down to three, which is our minimum value. Set it to 100. Fusion will think for a second, but it's going to get there. And there we go. Our fully parameter driven part. You can do some really cool things with designs like this to make them scalable or more easily changed. I hope this video helped you create this simple part and learn how to use parameters a bit better in Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.